Your Excellency, the fourth president of Kenya, Mr. Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, former Prime Minister Raila Amolo Odinga, the clergy, all other protocols observed. Fellow Manas, welcome to the home of professors. First of all, I want to apologize to the Wananchi about what happened yesterday when there was a little fracas when I went into the home. Some people don't know that it's a law custom that when the widow opens the gate, the manners are allowed to enter and mourn. So the, door, the, the gates were closed, and I could understand the pain of the manners. And I'm extremely sorry for that. <laughs> My husband was a classy man, and I hope that today, that mantle will fall on the same people who came to mourn yesterday, that they will now continue in that same fashion of being classy because they stopped being rowdy. And as we go to inter my husband this afternoon, please come home, sit down and mourn, but please let it be in a classy fashion. No rowdiness. I really appreciate that. And as you know, the internment sites cannot accommodate all of us. But the field can accommodate. So please, 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 let it be the inner Magoha family. We are so many. In Africa, we don't count children. But the Magohas are huge enough to feel where the grave site will be. And I will crave your indulgence to please allow the Magohas pay their last respects to their father, their second father, a friend, and a confidant. Sorry, I have to go through because I need to make certain facts clear. Some cultures are good and some things we have to emulate. And there are others. As time goes by, we'll have to give up. There's a saying in my language that says, if nobody gives you advice, look around and advise yourself. That's the only way you can grow. People were upset, some astonished that I did not wail and cry to enter the home. Sorry to let you down, my new position in the family does not give me such privilege to do public display of emotions. I'm a Nigerian. I was born a Nigerian. I'll be buried a Kenyan. In between, I'm a Malian. I mourned my husband the Nigerian way. Because when you are in distress, you go back to the womb. And the first language was my Anna. 
I mourned him in my own way. I did my songs of lamentation in church, sorry, at the hospital. Now, according to our custom, I had to mourn my husband in two ways. My husband was more than 70 years. The number of years that the good Lord has allocated to us. So from there, the farther away you are from 70, the more the rejoicing. It's not tears. Please celebrate with my husband. I brought him home as the custom. As the new head of the home, I had to welcome him and receive his blessings. They say dead men, they see and they hear. And he heard me, he saw me. They say my husband does not smile, but everybody who has seen him knows that that's a smiling face that has left the world. And that's what I want people to remember. He smiled that he gave hope to the hopeless. It's not the certificates. It's not who he was, but what he gave. People wondered what gave him strength. When he had a Kikuyu woman holding his hands and praying, a Kalenjin holding his hands and praying, and all he's asking is, what is he saying? They're saying, God bless you. Okay. And he would stop whatever he was doing to receive those prayers. Those were the things that gave him courage. Those were the things that gave him strength. He didn't have to take multivite for them. That was just his multivite. And I remember during COVID, that was the most trying time for our family, a family of doctors. And I told him, if this is the way you are supposed to go, there's nothing anybody can do about it. You can't sit down and mourn because it's COVID, you can't do your work. You're afraid to die. Cowards die many times before their death. And we were prepared as a family, whatever comes in the course of duty. God saved him. He went through that. He took all the precautions, though. But if it was his time, he wouldn't have made it. So for me, I've accepted he's gone. And I've accepted that I can take over the new role that he has given me. In his life, he was governed by the three pillars. His God that made him, Stare that molded him, and the medical world that shaped him. And that is why the three have played a vital role in sending him off. And I'm extremely grateful for the three who have accompanied us until the last day. As a wife, I supported him in so many ways. But one thing I like to say is that as a Calabar woman, I never let him down. He ate my food until the last day. For 40 good years, nobody else ate my husband's food. I cooked with all, all the, I'm so busy, but whether I'm in the country or not, it was my food that he ate. So on a parting shot, I want to say thank you to everybody who has come. And please, let the last steps be as quiet as this. Thank you.
We now invite all of us to stand as we are about to start the Mass. We are all now invited to stand as we are about to start the Mass.